Welcome, and thanks for tuning in to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, Islington, and online everywhere. We are in lockdown, but online is still a great way for us to meet, to gather, to be God's church together. So I encourage you to join in and participate in everything that happens. And then take the next step. Like this video, share it, and for sure, sign in and leave us a comment, your response below. During Advent, we wait. And as we do, it's a great chance for us to remember that Jesus is God's light. God's light shines in this darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Now, we can get easily distracted by anger and turmoil, and there's plenty of that these days. But God knows us. He knows us so well, and his peace is coming. Jesus, source of peace, shine in our lives and in your world with your everlasting peace. And as the Advent candle of peace is lit, let's sing a song about God's peace. Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, because they trust in you. Psalm 29, 11. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Isaiah 54, 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, Yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Where faith encounters fears 
Where heights and depths of life are found through smiles and tears. The joy of God is here to stay, embracing those who walk the way. The joy of The grace of God comes close to those whose grace is spent. When hearts are tired or sore, and hope is bruised or bent, the grace of God is here to stay, embracing those who walk the way. The grace of The Son of God comes close where people praise His name, where bread and wine are blessed and shared as when He came. The Son of God is here to stay, embracing those who walk the way. The Son God of wisdom and patience. In this season of Advent, we wait for your gifts of hope and peace to claim the world once more. Prepare our hearts and minds to welcome the coming of your Son once again and strengthen our courage and conviction to follow the way of the Lord. Even at this moment, we find ourselves sometimes insensitive to our own sin. Please help us to live our lives as your children. We are grateful that we can rely on your strength and comfort when so much around us has become uncertain. Comfort all those who are struggling with difficulties at this moment and let them experience your peace. Also protect the children and young people for whom the future seems confusing and even unimaginable. God, who makes all things new, Please remove all unnecessary things from our thoughts and minds and give us the single focus to listen to your word. Help us focus on what is truly important and who truly matters to us. Turn our lives upside down so that our priorities and purpose match those we have learned from Jesus. Shave and reshape us until we conform to His way of living and His likeness. Open our eyes to the most vulnerable people in our community and help us speak out with them and for them, even if we must challenge those who usually use power to get their way. We await your presence and your gifts of peace to us. Jesus, Prince of Peace, we pray in your name. Amen.
winter seems to be upon us. I'm no great fan of winter here. As I get older, I seem to like the cold and the snow less and less. But I must say there is one thing that I enjoy an awful lot. And that is right after a snowfall. The, the snow blanketing the ground, uh, the trees, the leaves. Is it, is it just me or does it seem to you that the world is somehow just a little quieter? A little more peaceful as a result that the, the snow kind of acts as a as a bit of a muffle over the, the the hustle and the bustle i found myself earlier today as the snow was falling just sitting in my living room looking at the window and just enjoying the the snow as it fell it's a little nicer from inside sometimes but again it seems to me that the snow acts as something of, of, a, of a muffle uh, a mute something that just brings things down, that brings the volume level down, and it just quiets things down, it brings maybe, maybe just a little bit of peace. There can be a, a falseness to that sense of peace and quiet. Yes, things do seem a little muffled, maybe a little quieter, but life is still going on all around. Obviously we face some very difficult and less than peaceful circumstances as we continue to go through this pandemic and then add to that just all of the life circumstances that we face uh, ourselves. It may seem quiet, but is there peace? What does it even mean to know peace? Where can we find it? Of course, these are questions and issues that go back millennia. We're going to open up today the book of Isaiah uh, in the Old Testament of the Bible, written 700 uh, plus BC. Okay, 2,700 years ago, and we can find there these same questions. What is peace? Where do we find peace? What's it all about? Of course, the problem then as now is that there are all sorts of different pathways towards apparent peace, different understandings of peace, what it entails, and how we can experience it. For example, there's the pathway of prosperity. Now, if I only had, well, if I only had the latest gadgets, if I only had uh, that, that raise, you know, if my income could be just a little bit more, uh, if only I had that, that bigger house, you know, then I'd, I'd have the patio, I'd have the, the nice big backyard with the pool, I could lounge by the pool. Uh, you know, if only I had that, that nice new car, boy, then when I drove to work, I could relax because that's a smooth ride. You know, there's all of these things. That's a pathway of prosperity. There's the pathway of positivity. You know, if only I have the right attitude, if I just think positive thoughts, you know, then, then I can stay positive and I can experience peace in the midst of chaos. You know, nothing wrong with either of those things. But it, there's the pathway of spirituality, which can mean so many different things uh, than as now. But whatever the case is, Scripture holds out a pretty clear definition, a pretty clear pathway to understanding what is peace, and that's what we want to look at today in Isaiah, uh, end of Isaiah chapter 8, and into the beginning of Isaiah chapter 9. You know, spirituality in ancient Israel was not confined uh, simply to the spirituality of Judaism, of worshipping the one true God, the maker of heaven and earth, centered in, you know, worship in the, in the temple in Jerusalem. There were actually a variety of, of competing spiritualities, the history of Israel often has to do with these competing stories that would come in and, uh, and draw people away and the Lord would invite them back again to be in relationship with him. But spirituality and spiritualism was an ongoing struggle and an ongoing issue in ancient Israel. And that's what we find happening in Isaiah chapter 8, at the end of Isaiah chapter 8. That's uh, where we hear uh, Isaiah talking about uh, mediums and, and spiritists. Here's what he says. 
This is Isaiah chapter 8, starting at verse 19. When someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Consult God's instruction and the testimony of warning. If anyone does not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. Distressed and hungry, they'll roam through the land. When they're famished, they'll become enraged and looking upward will curse their king and their God. Then they'll look toward the earth and see only distress and darkness and fearful gloom and they will be thrust into utter darkness. We'll stop there for now. This speed, uh, speediums, mediums and spiritists, this was uh, sort of people you could go to uh, who would maybe let you know what's coming down the road. They would tell your future, uh, tell your fortune, things like that. Well, when people didn't like what the prophets were saying, Sometimes there would be other prophets who would come up and give the people what they want. There's certainly examples of that in Scripture as well. But here in Isaiah, uh, we have people uh, basically deciding, we don't like, Isaiah, what you're saying. We don't like what the prophets are saying. We're going to consult someone else. It's, it's like getting an alternate, um, an alternate forecast. You know? <laughs> maybe you turn on the weather network and you don't like the forecast that you get there. So maybe you turn on uh, a different channel. And see if maybe you can find something a little different. Do you ever do that? Well, it would be the same kind of thing here. Isaiah has brought the forecast. But people didn't like it. And so they want to consult someone else. They want to get a second opinion. They want to find this other pathway. They want to discover what they want as peace. And so they follow this pathway of consulting spiritists and consulting mediums. Really what this is, it's an alternate avenue of divine knowledge or supposedly divine knowledge. The whisperings and mutterings of the mediums and spiritists, Isaiah contrasts with God's instruction. He says the, the, the mediums and spiritists bring ultimately what is, what is dead. Why consult the dead? But Isaiah is talking about the true, the, the one, the, the living God and his living word. And, and, the, and the clearest analogy he uses here is that uh, being in darkness versus being in the light. The ultimate result of those who follow the pathway of spiritists and mediums who who try to find an alternate pathway from the pathway of peace that God has. The ultimate pathway will lead them to distress, will lead them to uh, hunger, will lead them to wandering, rage, cursing, gloom, and darkness. But the light of dawn, Isaiah says, the hope of dawn, is found in God's instruction. The word here is Torah. You may know that that Hebrew word Torah is, it came to be known as really all of the sacred uh, scriptures of Israel. The Torah, the law, the, the teaching, the word of God. The light of dawn, the light of hope is found in the Torah, in God's instruction. Now having God's Torah, having God's uh, written word is wonderful good news. And Isaiah is here kind of reminding people about that. Why would you listen to whisperings and mutterings when we have the word of God, the Torah, the instruction of God? This is wonderful good news. The word of God keeps us on the right path, right? And in Psalm 119, we read that your word, God, is a light to our feet and a lamp to our path. And in Proverbs 3, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. The pathway to peace is not found in the whisperings and mutterings. The pathway to peace is not found in these alternate versions and visions of peace. The pathway to peace is found in God's light of dawn, in his word. And my goodness, that is good news. But as we go on 
into Isaiah chapter 9, we actually find out that there's even better news coming up. Nevertheless, we begin in chapter 9, verse 1. Nevertheless, that's a very strong word. There will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. And how does this all happen? The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Having the Torah, the word of God, is incredible good news, the, the written scripture, the instruction, the, the testimony. Absolutely. But, and this word nevertheless really uh, can be translated also just as, as a simple but. <laughs> I heard uh, not too long ago, uh, you may know the name Bruxy Cavey. He's the, the minister at uh, the Meeting House just uh, nearby in uh, Oakville. And uh, he did a series uh, a little while ago called Big Butts of the Bible. <laughs> I just found that funny. Uh, but really, he's looking at places like this where there is a big B-U-T but. It's wonderful good news. It's incredible good news. Why look at mediums and spiritists when we have the instruction, the Torah of God? People will walk in darkness if they turn away from the Torah of God. Nevertheless, but the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. There will be no more gloom for those walking in darkness. You know, I used to think, because this is a fairly well-known passage, to a guy like me, a pastor, someone who's been in the church his whole life, and maybe for you as well. This is a fairly well-known passage, Isaiah 9, 1 to 7. We tend to read it in Advent and Christmas every year because it points to something very important to do with Christmas. But I used to think, in all of the times that I had read this passage before, that there will be no, no more gloom uh, and the people walking in darkness. I used to think, well, that's just people experiencing trouble, people experiencing distress, going through a hard time. But see, that's the problem when we only read our favorite passages, the well-known passages, and don't read what comes before or what comes after. Because when we read what comes before, as we just did, we see that that gloom and that darkness is actually for people who have turned away from God's law, who've turned away from God's instruction, who've turned away from God and are consulting with mediums and, and looking for alternate pathways of peace and divine knowledge. For them, and therefore for all, there is a great light. There will be no more gloom because these disobedient people have seen a great light. Now, it sounds like he's talking in the past tense here. This is what we call the prophetic past, the pr prophetic past tense. Here's a prophet talking about something that will happen in the future, but he's talking about it so certainly that he's talking about it as if it's already happened. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. This is yet to come. But it's certain. It will be seen. And so there are these really three main images. We have darkness and light. That's the main one. 
And the other two maybe kind of give some specific examples or, or, or get a little bit more specific. But we also see the image here of uh, the oppressed being set free. In verses 3 and 4, talk about the rod of the oppressor. Talk about the, the yoke of slavery has been taken off their shoulders. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. See here, not only is darkness becoming light, not only has light shone into the darkness, but the oppressed have been set free. The rod across their shoulders, the bar across their shoulders, taken off and broken so that we can live and and walk and move in, in freedom. And, and the other uh, image that we have, uh, starting in verse 5 there, is, well, even in verse 4, anyway, uh, an image that we have going through here as well is the, the cessation, the stop, the end of war. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood. Yes, it's, it's a little gory uh, in its imagery. But in effect, it's saying all of these tools of warfare are destined for the fire because warfare will be no more. All of these things, they're images of peace. Slaves becoming free and experiencing the peace and and, and the freedom. Darkness, being, being just surrounded by darkness, but then walking into the light. And so it's, oh, just a weight off your shoulders, the peace of that. And of course, uh, no more war. Weapons, garments, boots, uh, everything that is bloody, destined for the fire. Why? Because a child is born to us. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Now, a lot of scholars talk about how really what they're talking about here, what Isaiah is talking about here, is something that happened 2,700 years ago uh, in his own time. That this was foretelling the birth of a great prince who would become a great king. And in the prophets, there usually is, there almost always is an immediate context for what they're saying. And if we were to look back at chapter 7 and chapter 8, we see that immediate context. I'm not going to get into all of that, and the, but the danger that, that they were facing in, in Judah and in Jerusalem at that time. But when we get into chapter 9, and in particular when we get into verses 6 and 7, it takes it to a whole new level. And we understand that this is so much more than just simply uh, the resolution of an armed conflict that they are facing at the time. Because this child who is to be born to us, the government will be on his shoulders. Well, surely that could be a prince or a king. But no, he will be called Wonderful Counselor. And more than that, Mighty God. Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. You see, while there may have been an immediate context, it goes far beyond that. Chapter 9 raises it up to a whole new level and says there is something coming. There is a pathway to peace that is coming in the birth of a child who will be not only a wonderful counselor, but who will be the mighty God, the everlasting father, our prince of peace. In many ways, this actually fulfills the prophecy of Emmanuel that we, if we had read back in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, we would have read there where uh, the virgin or the young woman would become pregnant and would give birth to and, and bear a son, and his name would be Emmanuel, which literally means in the Hebrew, God with us. This is the promise of God coming to be with us. And in the season of Advent, as we travel towards Christmas, we remember with anticipation. We remember uh, in, in uh, continuity uh, with the people of, of Isaiah's time that there will come a time when a great light will be seen. Of course, from our perspective today, we know and we see that that light has been given to us in Christ. All of this, in fact, is pointing us to Christ. 700 years before he was born, Isaiah was pointing ahead. To us, a son is born. To us, a child is given. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We'll talk more about the coming of Emmanuel, the gift of Emmanuel, in a couple of weeks' time. My friends, for now, as we walk towards 
Christmas as we walk through this season of Advent. My prayer for you is that you would, we would all make room in our hearts for the coming of Jesus, the coming of this great light. Because no matter what gloom we walk in, this good news is for you. This good news is for me and for each one of us. Let us, this Advent, make room in our hearts for the coming, a, a greater coming. You may have invited Jesus into your life many years ago. But as we walk through this season, know that he wants to come in and go deeper with you and with me. Maybe you don't even really understand what it means to invite him in. But if you want to understand the true pathway of peace, this is the pathway of peace. It is in the coming of this child and the giving of our hearts to him. And if you would like to know more about that, then there's an email on the screen. Please do get in touch with us. I'd love to talk to you more about it. But in the meantime, as we go from this place, remember, those walking in dark darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counsel, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace.
Das glorious song of old From angels bending near the earth To touch their hearts of gold To all the earth could will and peace From hands so oh gracious King The But with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angel's strain have rolled two thousand years of all. But we through din of war hear not the love song which they And he beneath life's crushing load Whose forms are bending low Who toil along the climbing way With painful steps and slow Look now for glad and golden hours Come swiftly Rest beside the weary road and hear the angels sing. For love and days are hastening on by prophecy of old when we. And so my friends, as we go from this time together, go knowing the peace that only Christ can bring into your hearts and minds and lives. Go experiencing his presence through the power of the Holy Spirit. Go knowing the love of God, our Heavenly Father. My friends, let us go and walk in the light of the Lord. God be the glory. Go in peace. Amen. Hello. Thank you for watching our online worship service today. Subscribe, like, or leave a comment or question below. Today, December the 6th, is the last day to drop off local Christmas cards at the church for congregants to have them delivered on time. Thank you to those of you who have offered to deliver the cards to your neighbours. Christmas is an exciting time of year, but it's also a time of great need. Please continue to drop off new men's, women's, and children's socks for delivery to our mission partners, the Young Street Mission and the Scott Mission.
The church will be open every Thursday between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. for your donations, or you can slip individual pairs through the mailbox on the west-facing Beamish doors. If you are watching this premiere service on December the 6th at 10 a.m., it will be followed by communion with Pastor Sean via Zoom at 11.15 a.m. The Zoom link was in Friday's email. You won't want to miss some of our upcoming services, like Nine Lessons and Carols on December 20th, a special Christmas Eve service on December 24th, and a family Christmas play on December 27th, and evening services of prayer on December 27th and January the 3rd. If you would like to receive our weekly preview email with special alerts and a link to these worship services, as well as communion and other Zoom uh, gatherings, sign up on our website. Thank you for your donations which provide for the life, work and ministries of St. Andrew's Islington. Through e-transfers to office at standrewsislington.org, by hitting the donate button on the website, or through the pre-authorized donation program. Envelope packages are ready for pickup and you can email me to arrange that. Now let's hear from some of our St. Andrew's friends. See you next time. Good morning. My name is Valerie Reynolds. I really miss seeing everyone. I really miss worshiping with you all. You know, as this pandemic continues with no clear end in sight, it reminds me of our anticipation of Jesus' return. We also do not know when exactly that will come, but it will happen. And Jesus' call is for us to remain faithful and to persevere. I find in this second wave that I have to work a bit at setting my mind on what I can do rather than what I can't do. And uh, I want to be able to look back at this pandemic and feel no regrets. I'm really glad that I can take up some of the crafts that I enjoy, knitting and crocheting, for example. And uh, Paul and I really enjoy taking walks outdoors, sometimes with friends. And I'm very thankful uh, for all that's become available online, the online learning that we can participate in, and uh, especially small groups. I'm really enjoying my healing care group on Zoom and... Um, I participate in the Sunday evening service as when I can. And uh, on the Sunday evenings, you know, even our elderly sisters, Norma Fitzgerald and Doreen Medland, uh, zoom in and participate with us. And I just want to uh, give a shout out to Doreen. Um, this week, she is going to turn 95. And uh, last Sunday evening, Doreen shared with us how she became a Christian 18 years ago, 18 years, sorry, after she came to St. Andrews, she discovered what it meant to be born again. And uh, she is such an example of remaining positive during this time. There's, she said, reported there were 20 cases of COVID-19 in her residence, and so they are locked in their room. But she remains faithful, and uh, Doreen is such a prayer warrior. I am sure that I know she prays for everyone at St. Andrews. And so I am just uh, thankful for her example, and I really want to send along my greetings for uh, a wonderful day in spite of everything and our our love for you Doreen on this birthday we just want to honor you and I'm sure I speak on behalf of the whole congregation so a shout out to you Doreen 
So normally we bring greetings to the whole congregation on uh, Sunday to kind of let people know what's going on in our lives. But we wanted to take a moment today and bring a special greeting to our friend Doreen, uh, whose 95th birthday has just passed uh, this, this past Thursday. And so Doreen, we wanted to take a moment and bring just extra special greetings and uh, blessings to you on this special occasion. Normally, we'd have a cake at the church to celebrate, but we'll enjoy it here, and we wish you many blessings for this year. Happy birthday, Doreen. Happy birthday, Doreen. I hope you have a, a very special year, and uh, we love you. Three words of encouragement for you, Doreen. You are faithful. You show perseverance many, many times, and you are a great role model. Have a great day. Doreen, we wish you a happy birthday. We wish you a happy birthday. We wish you a happy birthday and lots of cake too. <laughs> Doreen, may God continue to make his face to shine on you and may he encourage you as you are a wonderful encourager to others. You are a gracious lady with a lovely sense of humor and you are a very dedicated prayer warrior. May God continue to bless you and take care of you and for your 95th birthday and for the years ahead. So happy birthday, neighbor. Hi, Doreen. Just want to wish you a happy birthday. I hope you had a good day and I hope you have a wonderful year and you're such a special person. God bless. Doreen, the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Happy birthday, Doreen. Doreen, you have been a part of our lives for decades, and we just want to thank you for all the love and prayers that you have poured into us and our family. And we want you to know that you are such a blessing. And we ask the Lord that he keep you and uh, keep you safe, that you may continue to be such an encourager to all of us. Okay. Happy birthday. Hi, Doreen. Um, when we came to St. Andrews it, more than 25 years ago, you were there and uh, you've been part of our family our St. Andrews family and I so appreciate it so just some good memories uh, may you have a wonderful birthday hi Doreen it's Doug and May Beth we bless you with health peace and joy on your 95th birthday happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday Doreen, Doreen. Have, have a great, great day. day God happy bless you Happy birthday, Doreen. Uh, we met, I met you and your husband first day when we came to St. Andrew and your husband was saying that he came to Czech Republic after the Second World War to bring uh, food uh, to Czech people. And we became good friends. Bless you. Bless you, Doreen. Have a great day. Doreen, I know you enjoy great music, so I wish you a year of great songs that feed your spirit and keep you healthy and happy in the Lord. May you know a great year ahead. Doreen, you are inspiration for me. Happy birthday, and I love you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Doreen. Bert and Sylvia here, 95 years old. Wow. Happy <laughs> birthday, and may God bless you. Happy birthday. We miss you. Happy birthday, Doreen. You are God's beloved. Bless you. Hello, Doreen. We're thrilled to be sending you big birthday wishes to you today. We bless you for the loving, praying heart you have for your family and friends. <laughs> happy, happy birthday from both of us. Blessings and all our love and hugs. Happy birthday, Doreen. It's Norma. There's a little story included on the card. When you moved out of your house, Doreen, I got your great blue watering can. I water with it two times a week upstairs, Joy does downstairs. And when I water with that can, I think of you every time. God bless, Doreen. Have a good birthday. And I remember making sandwiches with you for many years when you were on the Sandwich Brigade. Happy birthday. And so, Doreen, with all of these birthday wishes and blessings, know that you are beloved, you are blessed uh, of the Lord. 
And so we just wanted to take this time to say, Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Dory. Dory. Blessings on you. This is a greeting from Peter and Suzanne Brown in Paris. So, dear Doreen, what a privilege to be able to wish you a 95th birthday. Wow. We have such fun memories of delicious meals and warm welcomes and pleasant conversations with you and Stan at your home back in 2004, and then later some cozy visits in your room at the residence. Listening to stories of your past, seeing your amazing stash of books, mm -hmm. and hearing about truths you discovered in your Bible readings, as well as your incredible memory as you asked questions about details of our lives. Mm -hmm. We will always remember your gentle, unassuming smile and the lively sparkle in your eyes. So may the Lord truly bless you on this day and in the many days ahead. Happy birthday, Doreen. Happy birthday. <laughs> the sun of